Hey, what's up, YouTube? So yesterday, we had some first bit of good news, and a lot of good news is going to come out as 3.20 gets closer. And the good news that we have is if you look on the POE website, upcoming new schedule, and that is joy for the ears as everyone around looks for what exactly will GGG be addressing in the 3.20 expansion. And it's kind of a scary site. If we go to Reddit, and this is my favorite site because there's no other way to really gauge the community sentiment. I could read YouTube comments, but judging by what you guys write in the comments, it's pretty overwhelmingly negative. So I see on Reddit, it says, we're at the point where patch notes slash manifesto announcements are a scary anticipation rather than exciting. And that is pretty much in the past, whenever they did balance manifestos, and they do do a lot of them, you can see character balance in Lake of Calandra and Siege of the Atlas, game balance. Game balance, game balance. So they cover a variety of topics. And in the past, they completely destroyed ore stackers. They completely destroyed minion builds. They kind of buffed bows in the past. Siege of the Atlas, I'm not really sure. They did rework auras and defenses back in the day. And that was a pretty good success. The game balance and expedition was super scary. Because they actually just nerfed player power across the board with all of the support gem nerfs. And then the mana nerfs. And then the flask nerfs. So, balanced manifestos are a pretty exciting time, and when they give us these lists of topics, these are things that we can pretty much guarantee are going to function a lot differently than they did before. So, they gave us a list of topics, and we can speculate on what's actually going to happen. So, I'm pretty much just going to play both sides, because a lot of people are like, oh, you're too optimistic, or you're too pessimistic, so I'll give both point of views about what changes I think might happen. So first off, we have jewels and ailment mitigation, then curses, then Eldritch Altar revamp, which is actually the scariest one. Arse Nemesis, which I'm pretty much looking forward to. And then potentially a fifth post about other changes if needed at the time. So first off, first off we have jewels and ailment mitigation. And I'm not really sure if this is meant for two items or just one item in general. And the ailment mitigation offered on jewels, because it's kind of weird to bundle them up both together. Now, if you're a pessimist, you could say that jewels has to deal with cluster jewels being too OP. Right now, I think most builds will benefit from cluster jewels. And the only builds that don't really benefit that much are pretty much SSF hardcore builds where they're trying to fit in as many life nodes as possible or the tree pathing takes too many points. But for softcore trade, I can pretty much guarantee that every single build is probably better with some cluster jewels, especially if you're playing Venom Gyre or something like that. And then you can get like eye to eye and repeater. Or if you're playing a projectile build, you want some projectile speed and the list goes on and on. Now, ailment mitigation, if I'm a pessimist, I would say that ailment mitigation could be too easy to get. Right now, there's very, very easy avenues to get 100% ailment mitigation. You can pretty much use your Pantheons. You can get Cannot Be Frozen on the Pantheon. 50% reduced effective chill on the Pantheon. And then if you wanted to go full ailment mitigation, you could use the Eldritch Boot Mod, which gives you up to like 35% ailment mitigation. You can roll 25% ailment mitigation on your boots. You can Ashling like 25-30% on your chest. And then your shield can get you like 25% and you get some nose on a tree. And it is actually pretty easy to get 100%. And also, Purity of Elements is extremely, extremely strong, even though it's a 50% aura and getting 100% ailment mitigation. So they could nerf the values on ailment mitigation to bring some mods that are out of tune in line with other mods, and that is a very, very pessimistic point of view. Now, next up, they could also replace general ailment mitigation with specific ones, so they'll probably get rid of the mods that said chance to avoid elemental ailments and make it more specific so we have to invest in more things and kind of choose the ailments that we want to actually avoid now that would actually be a very very bad change and i'd be very sad if they actually went through with that now if i was an optimist i would pretty much just interpret this balance manifesto as that jewel implicits will be re-added into the game by some method other than harvest so you can see here these are some different ways of mitigating stuff that we had in the past you could get 15 percent chance to avoid being chilled avoid being frozen avoid being ignited so an easy solution is pretty much add these back into the game have it back in harvest have it cost a certain amount and i think it would be a lot better now another change they could do is that ailment mitigation will be easier to obtain due to how it feels almost mandatory i think most people can agree 
that playing without freeze immunity or playing without chill immunity or playing without shock immunity is pretty much a super fast way to die so they could try to make it so that these check marks that you have to have for your builds aren't as mandatory and we can get around to having more options in terms of build creativity and diversity. Now curses is kind of an interesting thing. I don't see that many people actually complaining about curses. But if I was a pessimist, I would say, oh, they could probably nerf curse on hit rings since they removed the mark on hit rings. They could also nerf curse effect on mobs while mapping. I do think that curses are extremely strong for mapping because they don't have that reduced curse effect that bosses do. They could also nerf curses across the board and try to move the power of curses into the tree and making you invest into doom. And doom is something that the longer your curse stays on the enemy, the more effect that it will have. So that would be a very, very bad change because the more stuff you move onto the tree, that means the less points we have for damage and survivability. Now, if I'm an optimist, I would say that maybe you can make curses last forever like Mark's and cap out the doom with a note on a tree and that'd be pretty cool. They could also buff the weaker curses to be more in line with the strongest Mark's. So that's something that I think a lot of people experience. If you don't have a plus one curse limit, you'll find a lot of times that Sniper's Mark or Assassin's Mark will probably be the best curse overall. Now, Sniper's Mark is just absolutely crazy, especially with Mark Effect and Venom Gyre and skills like Eye of Winter or stuff like that. It is just actually absurd. So we can see here, this is a Reddit post about the GGG's direction. And this is actually kind of scary because I could definitely see them saying some of this stuff, which is curses provide more damage than most of the strongest support gens with very little cost to build. Curse effects increase is already great more damage multiplier adjusted curses to be more in line with support gems element curses now provide negative 10 to negative 24 uh, elemental weakness now provides negative 8 to negative 20 added 24 new curse related nodes on a passive tree to compensate overall this is a buff if you get all the curse related nodes play a cultist and have perfect gear with curse mods and that is a scary direction so maybe they'll go that way they feel that curses are actually too strong if you if invest into curse effect and they want to bring it down more in line now hopefully that's not the direction they go and they make it so that we could have maybe more curses or they just adjust it so that it's more in line with marks now eldritch altars is definitely the scariest part that they could potentially change because i don't really feel like there's anything wrong with eldritch altars and i do think that eldritch altars are probably one of the best things in the game currently that should not really be touched because it actually adds a lot of fun uniqueness to mapping especially at the end game it allows you to maybe dupe divination cards dupe uh what's it called dupe currency for god touch it also allows you to get more quant and rarity and it also allows you to have some strategy while mapping because a lot of times you can run to the boss to get rid of the boss altars and i do think that fun bit of customization is imperative for making end game mapping fun in the long run now, the pessimist side of me could say that Eldritch Altars are too OP and limit build diversity, limit diversity for farming methods since every single method is just going to be about duping currency for God Touch or duping div cards for strong boxes. And I could definitely see them saying something like that if they wanted to be mean. They could also make it so that the all Eldritch Altar benefits cannot stack until you get all of the benefits. So say you can't stack quant and rarity, you can't stack duplication div chance or currency div chance or currency dupe chance. So that's something that they could potentially address. Now, if I was an optimist and thought that GGG was just going to be super nice about it, I would say that they're going to change some of the Elders Altered downside so that it's not too negative for some builds. There's some builds that really get screwed over, especially if you have Frenzy and Endurance char charges that you get no regen or you get projectile shoot in a circle around you. And some of the... Um, Searing Exarch Eldritch Altar mods are terrible, especially the one that summons a meteor from the sky and just kills you. And then there's also some other downsides that makes it so you have to take the Pantheon with Burning Ground. So this is something that I saw that's kind of funny. First they came for the Nemesis 3 and I did not speak out for I did not run Nem 3. Then they came for the Delvers. I did not speak out for I was not a Delver. Then they came for the Altars and there's no one left to speak out for me. So hopefully... They don't change Eldritch Altars to remove the positives because I actually really enjoy Eldritch Altars. Now, lastly, we have Arch Nemesis. And Arch Nemesis is something that's probably the biggest problem in the community's eyes. 
And that's because it's tied directly to loot goblins and it's very, very hard when you get the horrible combination of mods. Now the pessimist side of me will say that they're going to remove loot goblins with no equivalent replacement for endgame farming and that they might actually make it so that mobs can have more arch nemesis mods than before or they might make it so that they add new arch nemesis mods to make combat more engaging and these new arch nemesis mods are even more broken than ever. Now hopefully that doesn't happen but the optimist side of me says that they're going to re-add Valley of Darkness back into the game and this is the one that allows you to add one additional arch nemesis modifier to your mobs and this will make the base game a lot easier but also still retain how we can make the end game harder and Chris did talk about that in his vision and philosophy about how he wants players to have the choice to opt in to difficulty and receive more rewards. So that's one change that I think they'll probably do hopefully and they could try to find a way to keep God touching the game but find a way to make it so that you cannot call in a magic fine caller. This could deal with snapshotting your rarity and quantity whenever you encounter the mob for the first time. Now this is the change that I hope they do the most which is they try to overhaul how loot works altogether so that it's no longer reliant on Arch Nemesis. Maybe we can go back to the past where we had old league mechanics have high quant and rarity so we're not forced to find this perfect combination of loot. So I do think that this balance manifesto right here, Arch Nemesis will be the one that decides everything. And I don't really know why they have a fifth post about other changes if needed at the time. So maybe they have an emergency balance manifesto in case the first four balance manifestos does not get received very well. So it is interesting to see how there's no real manifestos about crafting, no real manifestos about gear progression or harvest. So it's kind of worrying. Maybe they will have the balance manifesto about harvest ready to go as the fifth one. And they did mention that this list does not include all the changes. They said that other changes, for example, some tweaks to melee, and this could be some huge melee buffs, right? Maybe hinted at in these manifestos or covered in the 3.20 announcement live stream and or patch notes. So we probably have to wait for the announcement live stream to really know what exactly is going to be happen happening in 3.20. But it is very, very scary, I think, to see any balanced manifesto about Eldritch Altars. I do think that they're probably going easy on us in the beginning so the jewels and ailment mitigation and curses are not going to be too bad and then the eldritch altar and arch nemesis is going to shake up the game in a pretty big way but thanks for watching everyone let me know down in the comments below what you think the balance manifestos will actually be and if you think you're going to be an optimist or a pessimist about the changes that ggg will implement into 3.20 but thanks for watching i hope you find more mirrors exalted orbs and divines and yeah, hopefully the balance manifesto is a home run, but see you next time. Bye.